Well, I hope you'll pay attention to the fact that we have uh, uh, welcomed back your health care partner. Thank you to our friends over at uh, Guam Regional Medical City. This is uh, an event that we're going to have the first Tuesday of every month. Uh, and uh, this being the first Tuesday of the month, I want to welcome into the studio uh, Dr. Marion Holland. Hello, and welcome back to Guam. Thank you. And Dr. Joseph Wiederman. Can I call you Joe, or people call you Joe? Of course. Oh, fantastic. I just That's your government name is Joseph. It's like your mother <laughs> and the bank. <laughs> or your boss. Uh, who is, happens to be here as well, uh, Dr. Felix Cabrera is also in the studio with us, as shy as he is, uh, the Chief Medical uh, Officer at uh, the uh, GRMC. Good morning, Dr. Felix, how are you? It's nice to have you I here. It's nice to have you here <laughs> in front of the microphone. Just, uh, just, you know, just for the, the heck of it, I mean, you've, you've been here before, uh, and uh, so it's always nice to welcome you back to taking the time Taking the time out of your day uh, to come down and talk to us about uh, your specialties, so it, we appreciate it. First, I want to start to, uh, start with you, Marion. You left. You came back. You're leaving again. You're coming back. This is a part of a new schedule that we have with you now. Uh, that, yeah. That's the hope. I I went to I went to Texas for a couple of years, but it's it's hard to replace the Guam patients mm -hmm. and the people who I've really missed a lot. Yeah. It, 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 you know, at the heart of the matter, which is that you both are cardiologists, it, there, there is something to the treatment of uh, Guamanian patients. It's a s smaller group, clearly, of people, and you, the interaction is far more personal, it would seem to me, considering where you both come from, you know. Uh, and, and so your experiences, uh, Joe, we'll start with you, uh, your experiences on Guam, you know, attacking a disease that's so prevalent. Well, so there are two aspects. One is that indeed the, uh, the incidence of coronary disease, not just in Guam, but in general among Pacific Islanders, tends to be very high. Some of that has to do with the incidence of diabetes. Some of that has to do with eating habits, which maybe we can work on a little bit. But certainly there is a large sort of uh, reservoir of untreated coronary disease, all of which is amenable to treatment. And once we can provide therapy, I think we can do a great deal towards, you know, increasing lifespans, decreasing heart attacks. The other aspect of it is that it's a wonderful place to work. Uh, there's less, uh, you know, knee-jerk hostility, which is something that you certainly feel in the New York, New Jersey area. This concept that, you know, oh, you're just doing this for money, or it's a less adversarial relationship. Um, and especially for those of us who are on salary and don't do any of it for money, it <laughs> doesn't make any difference at all. Right. That attitude was always somewhat insane. In Guam, in some ways, it's like going back in time 20 years, and the relationship between doctors and patients is much more personal, much more intimate, much more trusting, and it's just a pleasure to work here. I, I agree with that. And Dr. Felix, because you're a local boy, you understand this sort of dynamic between the patient, and you're talking about going back 20 years uh, there is so much of uh, has been developed in uh, this specialty uh, that we've never had before. And plus, there is a bit of a cultural difference in in the reverence toward doctors and priests in, in our islands. Would you agree to that? You'd be surprised how many times I've had uh, <laughs> patients accidentally call me father. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, there is something to be said about that, right? Well, I, I think what, um, you know, what, what like, as you, as you mentioned, what the heart of this is, is really, is that one is that there's two parts in that. One, there's preventative care, and then there's care when, when you really need it at the time. And yeah. so, you know, what we do at Guam Regional Medical City is that um, as a hospital, of course, part of our focus is being able to intervene at the time that's needed the most that can save lives and prevent disability. But, uh, but our focus also from within our capabilities is the preventative aspect of it as well. And this is a very, very personal uh, part. I think I've shared with you before, Patty, that uh, almost uh, last month was my father's 25th uh, death anniversary. Um, he died of a heart attack at the age of 45 uh, in his sleep, and I was 12 years old at the time. And I think about what trajectory I would have been on right now with, without that happening. And so we try and make the most of it, and I'm in a position right now that can, uh, I, I hope, find a very smart way to, to, to continue to, to develop this program on the island. We've made major strides, but we have a long way to go to provide a fully comprehensive cardiac program. Yeah, and I think that the point that, that you make about going back in the, in the history, we didn't have this sort of specialty care on a regular basis. 
and, and even in recent history, we would have visiting surgeons come by, handle a few patients, but for the most part, uh, the greater uh, population uh, with disease or with any, uh, with, with any history didn't have access. So w what's the deal with now growing into the, uh, you know, a larger program, now having two or how many? Uh, two or three or two? Just well, the, uh, more and growing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, more and growing. Well, the, more and growing is, is correct. Dr. Holland is here and she's going to be here on an intermittent basis. Uh, Dr. Waska, who's also a uh, general cardiologist, is here and at least will be here for the foreseeable, you know, short term future. He may stay longer because um, he seems to be interested in doing that. And I myself am back now. Uh, currently for a year, but my intention is to stay quite a bit longer. I'm really You've looking made that at, known that you really yeah, like I'm practicing. I'm really looking at a three to five year time frame yeah. and I want to stay here and try to build a program. Yeah. So I think, and we will be getting a cardiac surgeon who also will be staying here uh, within the next several months. So we are going to be building out a much larger cardiac program that we hope will be a permanent benefit to the island and not just something that comes and goes and comes and goes. Now with, the, with Dr. Holland here, does that also free you up from, how do you expand the program? Are we talking about more educational possibilities, more outreach in the community? Well, that's certainly a possibility and we intend to do more outreach in the community, but just having more cardiologists available to see more clinic patients means that we can do more preventative care. I mean, one of the things that I've seen is I'm doing a lot of treatment of acute heart attacks but I'm not getting enough people to come into my office saying I get chest pain when I walk. And those people, if they come in then and I can treat them, I can prevent them from having heart attacks. So I'm doing a lot of putting out fires where I would prefer to see more people earlier in their disease course. And by having more physicians and a larger clinic system available, I'm encouraging patients to come and see me. You know, if you're climbing a flight of stairs and you're getting chest pain, don't wait till you get your heart attack. Come see me in the office. We'll take care of you beforehand. So I think preventative services and general management of cardiac disease is going to be the goal moving forwards. Dr. Uh, Holland, you know, being a woman, clearly you have experience talking to other women who suffer symptoms that are sometimes much different than what men feel. Is that right? Uh, yes, women, women usually have different symptoms. Uh, they can have the common symptoms that everybody hears about with the chest squeezing pain, arm pain, but oftentimes they'll have um, stomach irritation, uh, irritability or nausea, um, uh, sweating or even dizziness or shortness of breath, which may be a little bit different than how men present and uh, can be missed. So it's important for women to come in and get evaluated. Uh, what, what is, can I just add uh, something sure, in terms of what Dr. Holland said? Um, I just uh, treated a patient with a heart attack yesterday who came in after she began to have discomfort uh, maybe 14 hours before she actually brought herself into the hospital. Mm -hmm. And this also relates to, you know, women's medicines issues. There's too much denial. And this is something where, you know, if a woman gets a symptom that feels like a really bad stomach ache that doesn't go away or just generalized nausea, please don't ignore it don't just come into the ER. At worst, you'll have an EKG and they'll send you home. But the earlier you come to our attention, if it is a heart attack, the more heart muscle we can save. So please, especially among women, don't ignore these atypical symptoms. Come to the hospital. Yeah, we, we tend to do that with the aches and the pains, especially as you grow older. But do you have to be prone to some sort of history of the disease in your family uh, or or you know, to, to, for it to affect you? Well, the person who came in, she was uh, a relatively young woman. I say that younger than me counts as a young woman. <laughs> so, you know, but she did have high blood pressure, diabetes, and high cholesterol. So mm -hmm. she had every reason to have coronary disease. No, if you have none of those issues, then it's not very likely that it's going to be cardiac. But if you're already on medications for hypertension or you're a diabetic and things feel funny, don't ignore it. The mm. sooner you get in, the more good we can do you by opening your artery. That, and I think that, that that's a very good point because a lot of women, like I say, we, we tend to live with these aches and pains just, just uh, the course of, you know, being female, I guess. Uh, I was talking to a doctor who said, uh, she asked a patient, do you have any pain? She said, eh, you know, backache here. And she's like, no, that, that counts as something. When I ask if you have pain, uh, that counts as something. But women, is it cultural at all here, if you've noticed, uh, that, that, that we tend not to want to go to the doctor in order to save 
distress on the rest of the family. I've heard that too. I'll defer to Dr. Holland on that because she's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's much of a, as a woman thing as much as it is a woman living in the islands. You know, we have a sort of different makeup uh, in the islands. I think you can appreciate that. Well, I'll defer that part to, to uh, Cabrera, <laughs> but um, I would say that women tend to want to take care of their family and I'll always kind of defer to somebody's, uh, their son, their daughter, their father, their husband's illnesses, but then don't take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. um, they always take care of their family first, which is, which is nice, but they need to take care of themselves so they won't be around. Um, the cultural aspect of it. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, Cindy makes a good point. We're too busy. Uh, sometimes I just don't have time to go yeah. to the doctor. I guess that's Well, I think point. from, yeah. you know, as we know that here in the, in the Micronesian region that um, we tend, that more often than not, it's a matriarchal uh, system. And, and so um, a lot of times women feel like that being stoic is a big part of their job. And, and uh, unfortunately, it comes at the expense of their health care in a lot of ways. And mm. so... But um, uh, but kind of transitioning, I just wanted to make a point that with um, you know, with the heart itself, you know, it, it's a pump. Okay, it's a pump that pumps blood to the rest of our body and that that sustains our life. But like any major pump system, there's a, there's a plumbing component, there's an electrical component of it, there's a, a deep mechanical component, and then so as building a, a comprehensive cardiovascular program, we have to address all these different components. Dr. Holland is the electrician of the heart. Ah, okay, so that's speak. what I was gonna. Yeah, all right. and then uh, uh, quite fittingly, Dr. <laughs> Wiedemann is Joe the plumber okay. uh, in, in a lot of ways, <laughs> and then a cardiothoracic surgeon may be the deep mechanical person that comes in and does a lot of the, the structural changes as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but in each way, there is a structural component to it, and, and they specialize in those different areas. Yeah, what does it mean to be an electrician in this business? What does that mean exactly? So I, I, do, I deal a majority with arrhythmias or problems with the rhythm or electri electrical system of the heart, um, and that may be somebody passing out related to a rhythm disorder, maybe a, somebody with a bad functioning heart that has a, a, a rhythm disorder and needs a device. Um, so a lot of things that I want to work on or redevelop while I'm here are expanding the, the uh, possibility of monitoring better. And uh, uh, Dr. Wiederman had already started uh, uh, setting up a Zio patch, which is a, a, a Holter monitor that you can do for a two-week span. So we're going to try to have that in the hospital so that we can monitor patients a little bit more closely. There's also implantable devices that you can um, easily implant and they are, uh, they, the battery stays for about three years. So if there's any, um, any concern either for a stroke patient who you want to look for atrial fibrillation or a patient who has a passing out episode and you want to see if it's related to a heart block or some, um, something that could be treated, um, these long-term monitors will help to diagnose and, and subsequently treat mm -hmm. the problem. Um, so that's definitely something I'm looking forward to uh, trying to build up, and which a lot of it can be done remotely, so I can still do it mm -hmm. while I'm yeah, in It allows you to go back yeah, and forth. Yeah, the technology is so great. I mean, yeah. like a pacemaker now, they make it at the size of the tip of your pinky. Oh. You know, pacemakers, yeah. you, you could see through the skin usually, you know, right. as a classic example, but now they make them that small. Yeah. And, uh, and so those are, you know, the, the technology continues to build, and, and so we have to stay on top of that as well. Uh, well, I, I certainly appreciate the knowledge and look forward to, to more of this. I think that a lot of people have taken away from this program things that they never thought about before, and to have uh, the specialty right here at your fingertips is always a plus for the community. So welcome back again, and uh, Dr. Joe, it's nice to see you again as well. Keep Thank up the good work. Thank you very much. I just want to put in one additional sort sure. of little plug. Uh, to let people know that in the catheterization laboratory where we've mostly been doing balloons and stents, as of this week we have new equipment which allows us, it's one device called rotational atherectomy, which allows us to treat very heavily calcified arteries. This is something that never existed before on Guam. And another device called intravascular ultrasound which allows us to image arteries from the inside oh. using an ultrasound probe. So basically another way of saying that interventional therapy in Guam is actually in 2018. Well, look at that. A Rota Rooter. Rota Rooter. We liked it. Everybody can, can uh, to relate to that. Thank you so much, Dr. Felix, for, for dropping by and offering the support. We thank you oh, so much for thank that. Thank you so much for having us again. It's Patty. my pleasure, and thanks, Cindy, for the hookup as well. Uh, that is your healthcare partner. We're doing this every second Tuesday of the month, and uh, we'll do this again next month in July.